Good morning, folks. Just a quick question here. I have a customer who had a question for me about utilizing bolt patterns as a secondary or tertiary datum. We see here in the ASME Y14.5 2009, we are using the 2009 because that is what is specified in the customer drawing. We have over here the Y14.5 94, 2009, and 2018. Always important to reference the correct standard as listed on the drawing. We also have the ISO 5459 handy if we need to reference that. For this particular callout, what we see is that there is a positional callout. In this case, it's positioned to A. And then underneath of that, we have the B datum flag. And of course, that is being applied to all four of these holes. And what this basically means, as we see in the right half of this illustration, is it's as if four pins came through perfectly spaced by the basic dimensions through the holes and basically simultaneously controlled rotation and in this case also controlling origin that would depend on the datum arrangements as to what degrees of freedom are specifically controlled if we want to look at the text for this we can go back two pages to page 67 and we see section 4.12.3 which is going to talk about patterns of features of size a bore being a feature of size. Now what we're going to actually do is try to set up this particular call out in Calypso. Position to a diameter of 50 microns relative to datums A and B. I go ahead I went ahead and set up a little CAD model and program in Calypso. We've already created our features. We have cylinder A down at the bottom. We'll talk about cylinder D in a minute, but for now we have cylinder A. We've also created a plane C. Again, we'll deal with that in a minute. And then we have eight radially arranged bores that represent datum B. All eight of them simultaneously are datum B. And then for the purposes of evaluation, I've created a little bolt pattern here uh, that'll be our feature group. So the first thing we want to do is to create a datum reference frame that represents, again, A and B. A being the cylinder. B being these bores. To do this, I like to do my datums in stages. We are going to have to do a geometry best fit to go ahead and get all eight of these radially arranged bores. So we're going to come up here to resources, utilities, alignment. And inside of this alignment, we're just going to put datum A. So select already extracted features. There's datum A plugged in. We see that datum A is controlling spatial rotation to the z-axis that's two degrees of rotational freedom and then it's also controlling translation to the x and y so two degrees of translational freedom that is four out of six degrees of freedom that have been controlled by cylinder a we're going to rename this alignment drf datum reference frame and give it a label of a next to account for datum b which is this radially arranged pattern we're going to come in here, Resources, Utilities, Geometry Best Fit. Now, for this Geometry Best Fit, we're going to select our elements, and those elements will be all eight of the cylinders. Click OK, and now we have them in here. Our Geometry Best Fit is, in fact, going to be D, R, F, A, B. Oops, B. There we go. First off, it has to start off not as the base alignment, but as DRFA. So it takes all of the orientation and, rota and locational controls that are found in subalignment A are now where we start here. From there, we need to further modify it. Now, DRFA, in fact, already controlled translation along X and Y and rotation around X and Y, only leaving translation along Z because these pins are radially arranged, they will control Z translation, and rotation around Z, because that is, in fact, what they do. So we're going to click OK and OK. We now have DRFA, and then, more importantly, we have DRFAB. To check the position of these bores, we can go ahead and just create a new position, and this will, of course, be position to AB, and we're going to do this as a bore pattern. So we're going to switch from positional tolerance to bore pattern. We're going to put in our tolerance, which was 50 microns. Quick reminder of the callout that we're going for right here. 
and under our datum reference frame pull down, we're going to go to our sub alignment and we're going to assign alignment A, B. Next, we're going to come into this button right here and we're going to select the elements that we wish to measure. In this case, it's going to be all six of these 12.7 millimeter cylinders. Clicking OK, we see that they've been placed in here. Now, since we have a fully constrained datum reference frame, there's no best fitting, so we're going to uncheck rotation and translation. Once we've turned off the best fitting, it doesn't matter which choice we use off this menu, right? Gaussian, so that we can feed back to our manufacturing process. Minimum zone calculation, so we can determine for our customer how this part will assemble. View tolerance, so that we can account for the datums when we plug the datums directly into the datum reference frame. And L1, of course, predominance of data, which tries to best fit most of the holes into spec. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And as you see, we now have a complete positional callout. That's all that is required for us to do position to A and B. Now I want to go ahead and continue this video for just a minute and let's take a look at a more uh, another common callout that we see here. In this case we're going to go again position 50 microns. Now we have a combined datum AD followed by a secondary datum C and a tertiary datum B. So let's go ahead and take a look at our features. We have cylinder A and D, which now must become a combined datum. We have cylinder plane C, which is right here, and of course we still have our radially arranged bore patterns. First off, we need to combine datums A and D. So we're going to go to Features, Special Geometries, Step Cylinder. Inside of our Step Cylinder, we're going to do Recall Feature Points, grab Cylinder A and D, clicking OK, and of course we're going to call this Step Cylinder a, D, just for ease of business. Now we see when this comes in, it recognizes both diameters, it recognizes the positions of all the cylinders. We're going to go ahead and click OK. Next, let's go ahead and set up that datum reference frame. So first off, resources, utilities, alignment, and under our standard alignment, we're going to go ahead and, <clears throat> excuse me, grab step cylinder A, D for our spatial, as well as for our X, Y origin. In this case, we also have a Z origin of plane C. Remember, our callout is A, D, C, B. And so then we're going to come in here. Under comment, we're going to call this D, R, F. And this is going to be A, D, C. There we are. And clicking OK. We're going to now create another geometry best fit to go along with that. So resources utilities, geometry best fit. This geometry best fit, once again, we're going to grab all eight elements of datum D. <clears throat> and in this case, once again, datum AD is controlling translation along X and Y, as well as rotation around X and Y. But datum C is going to control translation along Z, leaving datum B only to control rotation around the z-axis. And once again, we're going to set this to start off as datum DRFADC. And this is now going to become DRF-AD-C-B. And we'll click OK. And of course, to complete the callout, we're going to create another position. This one is going to be position to ADCB. Let's go ahead and grab our alignment, ADCB, switch over to a bore pattern. Oh, we should set our tolerance of 50 microns. And let's go ahead and select our elements. Once again, we're going to check these six cylinders. Clicking OK. We do not have any best fit allowed. Clicking OK, and voila, we have completed both of those. Hope you guys find that helpful. Again, a quick review. We have a cylinder A, so that we used A and all eight datum Bs in order to accomplish this call out right here, true position to 50 microns to A and B. And in order to do that, we created datum reference frame A using this cylinder, datum reference frame AB, which is a geometry best fit 
with evaluation constraints only allowing best fitting along Z and rotation around Z. And then finally, we use that for a positional tolerance. And inside of that positional tolerance, we did not allow any additional best fitting, and we did use our sub-alignment. We then went to create a callout for this, which was true position O5 to ADCB. In that case, we had to create a stepped cylinder AD. We already had plane C in existence. We created a sub-alignment using step cylinder AD for spatial rotation, XY origin, and plane C for our Z origin. After that, we created another geometry best fit using all eight cylinder Bs. Under this evaluation constraint, we only allowed rotation around Z. And finally, we used that in a positional callout, and we assigned ADCB as well as not allowing any additional best fitting. There we are. Again, I hope this was helpful to everybody. Thank you very much, and good day.